Hello, it's Damati here from uh, Redware. Um, we're going to show you how to build this uh, dog and crab game. Um, it's a game we've had for a long time, ever since 1.4 of Scratch. It's not changed at all, uh, but I'll show you how to make it again so uh, you can see with Scratch 3.0. Um, obviously, the, the project's here. You can just um, edit it and uh, you know uh, mess around with it, but I'm going to show you how to do it from scratch. So we've got a dog here that runs around the screen uh, catching the crab. And I've just added a little feature. You can uh, use the arrow keys and have a two-player game if you want to. So we're going to make this game uh, now uh, from scratch. So we've got a new project. We want to bring in our crab and our dog. And let's get rid of the cat. And let's start with the crab. So the crab, we want when we press the green button, uh, we want to reduce it inside and just make it float around to a random starting position. Um, so let's get going. So if we select the crab and we want to look at the code, and we want an event which is the green button. So when the green button starts, uh, we want to change the looks of the crab set it to 20 uh, 30 percent of its size like so and then we want it to zoom or start in a different position on the screen now i happen to know that it's minus 240 uh here on the left you can see here minus 240 on the right is it 240 yeah 240 um and 190 190 minus 190 so what we can do is we to start it off, we can say go to. Uh, but what we want to do is use a random number. So here we go, random minus 240 to plus 240. Uh, and that's going to be our X. So that will send it randomly on the X axis. And then we want random minus 190 to plus 190 and that will send it to a random spot all around the screen so that's that's our beginning of um, the crab now with a dog what we want it to do uh, is again just set it to go to the middle change the size so let's get that sorted first so on the green button uh, we want it looks to change the size to 60% and we just want to start it with a go to zero zero um, to make it go to the middle of the stage each time. So there we have it starting, that's fine. Now what we want to do is let's get the movement sorted. So we want the, the dog to follow the, the mouse cursor and we want the uh, crab to go with the arrow keys. Probably the arrow keys is easier, so let's just start with the arrow keys. So we've got an event when the key is pressed. So when the left arrow key is pressed, uh, we want it to move. We want, uh, well, we could use move, but easier, we can change X by minus 10 or minus 20. Let's go 20. And then every time we hit the left arrow, it's going to move left by 20. I can just copy that, and when it's the right arrow, uh, we can just go change X by 20. So it'll go right. So we got right and left, and then we can do um, quite easily again. We can have an event when the up arrow is pressed. Uh, this time we're going to change Y. Didn't find it. Up arrow, change Y by 20. And down arrow, change Y by minus 20. Oops. 
So there we've got. Yeah, we've got the crab. So crab's done. We could just right click, clean up blocks to make it a bit tidier. So now let's click on the dog and look at the sprites. And what we want to do is that we want mouse following behavior here. So we've got a special uh, point towards um, mouse pointer. And we can have a what forever loop, which we use a lot in uh, Scratch. A forever loop basically runs forever and gets it to point towards the mouse. So that's great. But also we want to uh, just get it to move. So we can get it to move. If we want it to move slower, we can just go move five. And that's uh, going to follow the mouse around whilst player two can, uh, sorry, player two can move with the keys if you want. Right, the one problem here, see the, the doggy uh, shakes around a bit. We don't really want that. Um, so there's just a little trick. Uh, computer people would call it a clutch. Uh, a little trick to get it to work. So what we want to do is we want to go, we want to, we want to if here and there's a special sensing um, which is the distance to the mouse pointer here so what we want is if the distance to the mouse pointer is greater than five then we want it to move otherwise we just want it to stay still so it stops that little shake so we put the, if the distance to the mouse pointer is greater than five move five steps Put that inside, you still point, and you see now it's great. So our game is uh, on its way, really. We've got the, uh, the dog moving. Uh, we've got the crab moving. And now we just need some behavior for when the dog touches, catches the crab. So uh, what we'll do is we'll make him bark. So if you see the sounds here, we've got a barking sound. Uh, we could import, uh, you can import a sound, you can import some other different sounds, so you can make it uh, screech instead, for example. But let's stick with the dog. Um, so what we want to do, the sound's called dog one. So what we want to do is when the, it touches the, 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 the crab, we want it to um, play dog one. So we have a special sensing here. Now, a lot of the sensing is done uh, with colors, but in this case, we can actually go, if he's sensing uh, the crab, um, play the dog one. So we need a, an if, if the dog is touching the crab, uh, we want to look at the sounds, we want to play dog one until done if we didn't say until done it would just keep on going oh, oh, oh. Uh, but this way it's better honestly it's better with the, with the done um now the crab we don't want the crab to just sit there we want the crab to uh run away when it's uh touched by the dog um and we could put a forever loop in on the crab and say if you're touching the dog um, but I think the programming gets a bit complicated there. So we're going to do a special thing called a broadcast. And a broadcast is basically the dog is going to go, oh, touching the crab. It's going to shout it out. The crab's going to hear uh, the dog broadcasting. Uh, he's touching the crab and then run away. So it's an event there. We've got a broadcast. So we want the dog to broadcast a new message saying uh, dog touching crab and then the corresponding one if we click on the crab uh, and we're on the code for the crab we can have an event a broadcast event uh, when I receive dog touching crab and it could be lots of different messages here and it's a great way to communicate so what we want to do is just run away. Let's run away 50 steps uh, in a random direction. So we can turn and use the random operator again and do a, a minus 90 to plus 90. So we're going to turn in a, a random direction uh, when we receive 
that. So let's give it a go. So it's running away like that. And we're nearly done. Uh, we just, uh, I mean, there's other things you can do here, like put a score in. Um, I don't know if it's worth doing. Let's just do it. Uh, we could do it very quickly. Uh, just put a score in, make a variable called score. Uh, just quickly, we can leave it on the screen and we can um, look on the dog. And when the dog uh, is touching uh, the crab, um, we can change the variable by one. Um, sometimes it's not great when the dog keeps touching the crab, but it should have to work. again really there all right there you go so that's the score and the final thing i just want to fix up the background so what we're going to do we're going to import a background And import this beach Malibu background. I'm going to highlight the background. Uh, I'm going to go to the costume. I'm going to chop this bit here so that I've got uh, the bottom half. And I'm just going to copy it, paste it in here. And again, just to make it go where we are here. And that's it, the game's finished. So let's try it once more, let's zoom it up. So start from beginning, uh, I could set the score to zero there. Um, and then, oh, every time I touch the, uh, the crab, I'm just gonna move it around. Obviously, we've got another player making it run away here. Okay. So that's uh, the game. Better go.